Hey folks, how you guys doing? Hope you're all having a great day today. Um, I've got a little bit of in-between time, so I want to, I, I put together a little list of things to talk about. I've got nine, nine things on the list. Uh, number one is, I sound a little nasally or crappy right now because I played in a pool tournament last night. And, well, let me back up. A little bit of, a little bit of backstory. So in 2008, prior to 2008, um, I graduated high school in 2004, had a you know, a steady job, no debt, had my own place, and uh, no care in the world. I was obsessed with shooting pool. I got pretty good at it, and it was just, shooting pool was my life. 2008, the economy tanked, and it hit North Mississippi really bad. North Mississippi is, um, has, has a high concentration of furniture industry, furniture manufacturing. So like Ashley Furniture, American Furniture, Southern Motion, um, Berkline Benchcraft, which I think they're out, they're under, or they went under, whatever. Uh, anyway, a lot of different furniture manufacturing. 2008 happened, the economy tanked, and it hit everybody hard. A lot of the companies either went under or did massive layoffs. And there was a time where I think like everybody I knew locally, everybody I knew locally didn't have a job, including me. <clears throat> um, so at that point, you know, nobody has any money to shoot pool. Uh, the, the pool hobby in North Mississippi pretty much dried up. And I sold everything that I had to get out of the hobby. And that's actually how I funded the start, the first start into woodworking. Um, anyway, fast forward 10 years to about three weeks ago, me and a good friend of mine who used to shoot together started shooting pool again. And oh man, it's just like riding a bike. You get back on the, you get back on the seat and it's just, everything just starts to click. You're a little rusty, you know, but everything just starts to click and all those good memories come back. It's just been so much fun shooting pool again. So that was about three weeks ago we started back and last night was the third tournament we shot in together and uh, just, just so much fun. But I bring that up because the place we shot in last night was incredibly smoky in the uh, pool hall and I'm not going to get into you know bashing people or anybody. We all know about cigarette smoke, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, it got to me last night. <clears throat> and uh, that's that. That's why I sound like crap. Number two on my list. Um, so the last project that I put out on my main channel was on making this tool well. And I've said previously that I'm just trying to experiment with this workbench. This is just, I've got no long-term goals with this workbench. Just experiment and have fun and, and see how it incorporates into my workflow. And see what I can learn from it. So when I made this, I knew that it was going to replace my assembly table out here in the main area, uh, main, I guess, work area of my shop, away from my tool wall. And I've noticed that as I'm working through here, stuff gets in the way. You know, this, this work surface isn't crazy large. This isn't like a big old eight foot workbench. It's six feet, by the way. Uh, and having stuff in the way is kind of inconvenient when I need to just, if, if I'm taking it back and forth to the tool wall, that's inconvenient, especially if I'm going to, you know, there's an option to use it again. So that means it's actually, it sounds like a better idea to go ahead and build the tool wall and experiment with it like, like, like so. I'm so glad that I have since putting this on, it has been so convenient, even with changing out all the lights in my shop, which I'll get into in just a second. I use the tool well to pile stuff in that I was currently using, and then if I needed more work surface on top, I could still access all this work surface. So anyway, so far, I'm really digging it. It's uh, added to my workflow in a, in a positive way, and yeah, we'll, we'll give it some time and, and see if things change, but I like it. I really like it a lot. So I bring that up because number two, the comment is, this was, this, this was a comment that was surprisingly very frequent on that video. Uh, why not just put the tool well in the middle of the bench as part of the initial design? One side of the bench has now become inaccessible. Not sure how this adds any benefit to the bench. Well, I don't think it's inaccessible on this other side because if you just walk over here to the other side, you can still access it. I guess that was the smarty pants answer. Um, <clears throat> but no, it, it didn't decrease the accessibility on both sides. And now when I built the workbench and was talking about it and on you know, my social media and such, I mentioned that I do want to be able to work from the other side as well. And the main reason there is because the number one tool in my shop is this camera. And if it's just better lighting or better convenience or better camera angle to say, 
instead of work from this side of the bench to put over here, I guess, and work on that other side, and it works, then from the camera, it just seems better. So that's why I wanted that. Now I'm not going to, you know, put a board over here like this and chop a mortise right on the edge. I'm not going to do something like that. It doesn't make any sense. But it, it gives me options working all the way around this thing. And adding the tool well does not decrease those options. So, and then also on that same token, you know, this isn't that much space here. From that side of the tool well to over here, that's eight inches. So by that definition, that makes this tape measure inaccessible from where I stand. That's eight inches away. I, I just don't see the uh, logic behind that. And it was surprisingly way more common than what I thought. So that's number two on the list. Number three. Uh, which also relates back to the workbench. Uh, this uh, was on that video. I've been a fan of the uh, Twin J videos like this in the past, but this one is one of those videos that I really wish you went into detail on how you decided certain things. Do you plan on having a follow-up video on the tool well and how it is working out? Yes, just like when I made that workbench. Uh, give me some time, six months, I don't know. I'm going to do a follow-up on all this stuff. <clears throat> and uh, show you how everything's working out, let you guys know. No big deal there. Um, but uh, I wish that you've gone into detail on how you decided certain things. Uh, to that I'll say that not everything is in the videos. I've never put, I've never made it an objective to put all of the details in the videos, but I have made it an objective to always have extra detail in my website articles. So for those of you who just watch my stuff on YouTube, that's fine if that's what you want to do. Uh, but I encourage you to check out my website and the website articles if you have any other questions that aren't answered in the videos or if you want some little bit more detail on certain things because in the articles, I do go into greater detail. And for the past five years now, something like that, I've always made a more detailed article for every single one of the bit videos, the videos, project videos anyway. I don't go into great detail for these vlog videos. Um, so yes, I encourage you to read the articles if you don't find the answer in the video. And you don't even necessarily have to go into great effort reading the articles. Just open up the article, press Control F on a Windows unit or Windows computer or I think Option F on a Mac and you can bring up the Find button and or Find feature and type in a keyword and go into the article where you can find something crazy fast and uh, get exactly the information that you need more efficiently. So yes, everything's in the article. Check out the articles. Number four, which relates back to number three, uh, what, you, what tool did you use to cut the joinery on the tool well? It's in the article. Read the article. I use the Panther router. I've had that for about a year now, and I've got a love-hate relationship with it, I guess you could say. Um, it's finicky. It's got a little bit of setup that I don't really... It's not as intuitive, I guess you could say, for me anyway, as just walking up and using a tool. Um, but it's very versatile and it has uh, repeatable precision. So I'll give it that. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's just, it's a very capable machine that requires a little bit of finick, finicky setup time every time you use it. And once you get it dialed in, it's repeatable. So there's that. That's the tool that I used. Uh, number five, you are a neat freak. You are going to not like, you aren't going to like how messy the tool well gets. I'll disagree with that and say that I'm not a neat freak. I just like in my shop for everything to have a home. If everything has a home, then it's very easy to declutter. And if everything is decluttered and clean and, and you just have a clean slate and a fresh start, then it's very inviting and welcoming to start and also to work on projects as you go. So I'm not a neat freak. And also to uh, compound, compound that, I'll say that my, sh my office, I've never been a, a neat person in my office. Something my wife always gets onto me about, my office stays trashed. I just have no desire or I have not taken the time to put much effort into organization in there because I really don't like being on the computer as much as I am. It's mundane tasks, just running through the same old wheel to get the creativity out there um, and everything's within reach. It's just, it's just, it's in a state of controlled chaos. And uh, yeah, just because I don't have a place for everything here in the shop, it's the exact opposite. 
So <clears throat> I'm not a neat freak, really. And <clears throat> excuse me, you aren't going to like how messy the tool well gets. I don't think that's going to bother me at all. So far, uh, it hasn't. I haven't really done a full-blown project yet. But the reason I don't think it's going to bother me too well is because when I clean up, which is frequently, uh, and then also after a project to do a full cleanup the, throughout the whole shop, it takes like 10 minutes to put everything away. And then I vacuum the floors. And at that point, if I'm vacuuming, you just pick up the vacuum and vacuum out the well. I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. Now, I don't hardly sweep in here. I swept in the video for the tool well to kind of have like the, the cleaning clone effect. Um, but I don't hardly sweep in here because it stirs up dust. I'll run the air cleaner cart and use the dust collector to vacuum everything. So that's that. Uh, number six, shout out to Stadium Map Art. So I don't know if you guys follow these. I don't know if you all follow these guys on Instagram, but um, Stadium Map Art. Oh, it's on the back. StadiumMapArt.com. This isn't sponsored or endorsed or anything like that. Uh, I'm just a, from one small business to another. I'm just a huge fan of their product. I think it's clever and it's unique and a really cool, really cool product for anybody who's got like a hometown mentality. I live in Mississippi, but I was born and raised in just in Livonia, Michigan, just west of Detroit. And uh, obviously, I don't. Oh, they're not in the video. All my sports flags up here are all Detroit. Uh, but anyway, so last year they sent me this map which is a 3d cutout of detroit partially of detroit and it's got ford field where the lions play and then comerica park where the tigers play and recently detroit uh, completed little caesar's arena which not only does it have the one of the worst names for any stadium out there uh, but they also have the red wings and pistons play in there so they updated it and i'll show some closer pictures but they updated it the map anyway to include it and it's really cool to see these side by side the old version and the new version because every time i glance at it i notice like like all these little uh land parcels they're, they're more detailed than the bigger version the newer one so i can see where they've they didn't just add little caesar's arena and add a couple more inches they actually went through and added a lot more detail to all the land parcels which is really cool and they've got all kinds of other cities and different stadiums not just detroit obviously so from one small business to the next, I really like what they're doing. And check them out, stadiummapart.com. And also their um, uh, Stadium Map Art on Instagram as well. So cool product. And thanks again, guys, for sending me this one. Appreciate it. Uh, the next thing is a shout-out to, hope I'm, hopefully I pronounced your name right, Luke Rockefort. Uh, he completed my two-drawer dovetail box course and provided some great feedback on it. So I'll just post all that on the screen right now. And in his email, the third paragraph, he says, uh, When you did the course, I bought it to support your work. I did not plan to build it because I did not think I was at that level. But I watched the video promoting it. My wife glanced over my shoulder and exclaimed, I want one. So I decided to challenge myself and make it. It was a good decision. Not only did my wife appreciate the gift but even more i gained a lot of confidence and i think this whole email is, is a really powerful statement because all of us we we don't give ourselves enough credit for what we can accomplish we just we haven't done it before so we think we can't do it or maybe it's intimidating or something but if you just get out there and actually do and actually try everybody out there everyone is capable of way more than what you give yourself credit for. I've got no business or woodworking training and I've started this whole business and it is what it is. So everybody out there can do some stuff that you're uh, at this exact moment not capable of, or not, I'm, I'm sorry, that you don't think that you are capable of. Uh, and just, you know, get out there and try. You're probably gonna fail, you're probably gonna mess up. Big deal, learn from it, try again. And uh, yeah, there's nothing you can't do, just stuff you haven't done yet. Uh, next up on my list, number eight, uh, LED shop lights installed. So I got up and down an eight-foot ladder about 16 million times and changed out all of the lights in here. Not changed out, I should say. I actually just installed new lights in here, uh, transitioning from fluorescence to LEDs. And the cool thing is uh, I, I kept the original fluorescence up there. And when I put the fluorescents up, I installed a brand new circuit, two circuits actually, to control those lights. 
And when I installed the fluorescence, I actually just took down the original garage lights that were in here before I turned this into a shop and used that circuit to do the LEDs. So what that leaves me is the option to switch back and forth and actually show you on camera the exact A and B comparison. So it's not just, I'm gonna make a uh, detailed article and video on this and it's not going to be a matter of, hey, just trust my opinion. I'm gonna show you actual side-by-side -side comparisons and then also measure the actual light output from each source and give you some numbers and actual data to make an, a decision on this. So, so you're not just you know, relying on somebody's opinion. And by the way, that's not support, uh, sponsored or, or endorsed by anybody, but I'll, I'll show you all the products and all that good stuff. So that's that. Uh, I'm about to start in on it next. And then after that, the last thing on my list, number nine, um, actually, no, just uh, again, about the lights really quick. LED lights, it's, it's crazy to, it's crazy to see the difference side by side. The original lights, the fluorescents were 6,500K. These are 5,000K as far as color temperature. So they're a little bit warmer in color temperature, um, but they don't look that way. Everything looks natural. And by natural, I mean, I can see every bit of color in here that was otherwise kind of muddied by the green color that the fluorescents put out. So being able to switch back and forth and actually see the difference physically being in here and physically seeing my, you know, my work surfaces and everything, just, it's incredible. There's so much more reds and oranges and browns that are coming through out of everything compared to when the fluorescents were just muddying everything up with that green. So I'll get into more of that on the uh, website article, but I just wanted to throw that out there that these lights are amazing. The LED is, these particular LEDs are so much more clearer and I can see more colors, so it looks nicer. And it's hard to interpret, I keep going back to that, but it's hard to in, interpret that into a video because you have to see this through the lens, which is through the camera sensor, which has a little bit of, you know, the, the interpretation of this light through the sensor and then, um, you know, any type of post-processing on the computer, whereas I can see it right through my eyes. So LED shop lights. And the final thing on my list, after I rambled for quite a bit, is I'm finally able to start in on the coffee table build. I've got everything out of my way. Everything's good. The wood has had plenty of time to acclimate. I am pumped up to get that project started. And I just wanted it in my living room yesterday. So uh, I've got a little bit of work to do this week. And then full force on the coffee table build. Uh, also, let me know what, what type of videos you want on the coffee table build you want a stretched out in-depth series do you want uh um just you know youtube stuff that i could just blow through and, and get the project done and move on to the next one uh, let me know what you want and that's that you guys take care have a great day and i'll talk to you next time tool well is really handy i put my remote down there